voicemail one day, and I knew we'd arrived. He said he'd been out to Lord Belcoburn's and, quote, painting is finished, and it is, in my opinion, one of the best Jackson portraits ever made, anytime, anywhere, end of quote, Harold Adams. So with that backdrop, I'm, I'm pleased to introduce Lord Belcoburn, and we can unveil the portrait at this time. In Washington, D.C. at the headquarters of the IRS, 
It's one of the photographs that hangs in the third floor hallway out the, outside the general counsel's office. At the Department of Justice, where he was assistant attorney general first in the tax division, his photograph hangs in that incumbent's conference room. Similarly, in the antitrust division, where he was next assistant attorney general, his photograph hangs in that incumbent's conference room. In the office of the solicitor general, Jackson's photograph is one of the select few I'm sorry, this is now a portrait that currently hangs in the front office of the incumbent Solicitor General. The official portrait of Robert Jackson as Attorney General was painted in 1941 by John Chris Christian Johansson, who was one of America's noted portrait painters. It hangs today by the special selection of the Deputy Attorney General in his conference room. As an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, of course, Jackson was photographed with his colleagues, and he was also painted in a portrait, as he's, each justice is. His official court portrait, also painted by Mr. Johansson, who in effect updated the Attorney General portrait when Jackson died uh, suddenly, unexpectedly, in 1954, was completed in 1956. And that painting today hangs in the Supreme Court building, in the office there that is dedicated to the use of the Solicitor General, with the paintings of the select number of other former Solicitors General who then went on to become Justices of the Supreme Court. Justice Jackson's painting and portrait also resides outside the court. The National Portrait Gallery, not, not the National Gallery of Art, but close, uh, which is part of the Smithsonian, has in its permanent collection a 1950 drawing by Felix Topolsky of Jackson. That is a wonderful character study. The Portrait Gallery also has in its study collection an Oscar Stessel drawing of Jackson in his judicial robes. The Des Moines, Iowa Art Public Display painting by Ben Schaum, American social realist painter. This work, which is entitled Integration, Supreme Court, depicts Jackson and his eight Supreme Court colleagues, all white men, which is of course part of the point, sitting at their seats on the bench before the pillars that tower behind them. They were, of course, the court that stepped up and bravely and boldly decided unanimously Brown versus Board of Education, validating public school segregation in May of 1954. And here in Chautauqua County, the courthouse at Mayville includes, above the judge's bench in the county courtroom, its own copy, donated by the Jamestown Bar Association in the late 1950s, of Johansson's Supreme Court portrait of Justice Jackson. Unlike all previous portraits and photographs, however, Ms. Colburn's work now resides here in Jamestown. This location is significant historically because Jamestown became Jackson's home when he was 18 years old, and it served as his touchstone for the rest of his life. The Jamestown location is also significant looking forward because the Robert H. Jackson Center for Justice is becoming and for the future will be the touchstone for learning about Jackson's life, his accomplishments, his values and his ideas. I'd like to close by recalling a few words from someone who we remember and bless this weekend, Jackson's late son-in-law, G. Bowdoin Craighill, Jr. Bodie Craighill came into the Jackson family only during the Justice's last few years. A favorite Bob Jackson quip about Bodie, who was an accomplished Washington, D.C. lawyer then and throughout his long life, was that he, Bob Jackson, was delighted to have a son-in-law in law. I think of Bodie Craighill on this occasion because he once gave me this lovely description of the power of Robert Jackson's personality. This is a quote. If you walked into a room filled with 50 people, including Justice Jackson, Bodie said, you would say, even before you knew who was there, that there was a magnet in the room because of the way that people were drawn to him. On this occasion, I think we can all now say that the Jackson Center has in Ms. Colburn's wonderful portrait an accurate, beautiful, and very much alive Robert H. Jackson that is this center's own magnet. Her portrait of this great man will draw near and move the many people who will view it here, and by viewing it, truly see and experience his presence as they learn about him and from him. Thank you. That's what happens, you know. All right, everybody looking here? Good. Okay. <laughs>